how did uh, today go with this kind of being the first time you were able to get going at a faster pace than walkthrough? Sure. Um, day one for you all, day two for us, you know, but uh, I thought I thought today's tempo was good. You know, yesterday there was a lot of excitement. Um, and so, you know, some of the things we do, we, we put a lot of emphasis on, on our walkthroughs versus offense versus defense, 11 on 11, as you guys saw at the beginning of practice. And, you know, just stressing that it's a lot of above the neck work, it's communication, it's urgency. And I think our guys are getting better at that every single day. You really see it from the vets, the guys that have spent a lot of time in this league operating at a high level right out the gate, which is really encouraging to see. And it's good for those young players to see, too, kind of what it's supposed to look like. And so they'll be up to speed sooner rather than later. How important is it just this early in the offseason to work on tempo, two minutes? You guys do a lot of that, at least when we're here. Um, how important is that at this time just to get everyone on the same page as early as possible? It's, I, I think since there's no contact, stressing the communication as best we can is, is a big point of emphasis for all of us. Each day is slotted to be something slightly different, whether it's actually two minute red zone. We've kind of got these six practices uh, pretty well siphoned out how we want to do them. But one thing that does come up every single day is just stressing that urgency and communication. Those are two things we can control. And uh, we, want to, we want to come out of the spring feeling really good about um, you know, the, the communication level that our guys are operating at. How has Dax Hill done from a learning and retention perspective in just a short window. I, I've been really impressed with him. And I, I think the part that's maybe the most impressive is I always see him having these sidebar conversations with some of those veterans, you know, whether it be Vaughn or Mike or Cheeto or some of those guys. And it's after a rep, after a drill, um, whether it's him asking questions or whether them them helping him get up to speed. That's what you want to see from, from the rookies is – not feel like there's that wall between them and the vets communication-wise, not to be intimidated, ask these questions. And that just speaks, again, to the character of the veterans that we have on the team and that defense specifically. Um, they want to help these young guys bring them along as fast as possible because we know that we need everybody to help us. And I've been just been really encouraged about that part, uh, just from the veterans helping these young guys get up to speed quickly. When you run after him, spent a lot of time talking about his versatility. At this point of the season, or at this point of the summer, how do you balance having him do one thing, you know, safety versus number of things which you could be doing in the year. Maybe technique wise, they, they don't get to spend a lot of time doing all the stuff. <laughs> um, but they're in those meetings, they hear it all, they're forced to make those communications because a lot of times it's safety, you get put in those spots um, that the linebackers play and the nickels play. And so um, they get that work, you know, in one way or another. Um, it may not be the position they're labeled at, but they get that work just, just the way that we utilize those guys. Is there much more difference between the concept of free safety or strong safety and what are you having Dax focus on? There's a lot of crossover. You know, I think the bottom line, they, they do a lot of the same jobs. There are differences, but uh, for the most part, those guys at some point have to do very similar things as one another. Zach, um, you hear about it a lot when you, at draft time when you talk about players who were captains or leaders on their teams in college. Can a guy like Dax or any of your other rookies come in and be leaders right away? I mean, maybe, maybe that sounds strange that a hmm. rookie can be a leader, but can that happen? Yeah, it can happen in different ways. It, it can happen uh, through the confidence they have in themselves because they've studied, they're up to speed, they know, they're confident in what they're being asked to do. And so that confidence can shine through to other players where at that moment that that, that young player does say something, um, everybody else is going to trust them and believe in them because they've seen the work they've put in. And, and so leadership comes in a lot of different forms. It's not all just vocal encouragement and, and talking out loud. Um, it, a lot of times it's your actions. And been a lot around a lot of great veteran leaders that maybe don't say a lot, uh, but all the other guys put their eyes on them all the time to see how they conduct themselves in meetings and weight room and on the field. And when they're doing everything right, the moment that they do speak uh, speaks volumes, You know, sometimes more than just the constant chatter. So I think that they, we have a lot of young players that are very capable of that, that I've seen a lot of confidence um, in themselves. I'll, I'll give you one example. Tyson Anderson, you know, in a special teams meeting, one of the first couple of days um, was put in a position where he was extremely confident with what he was saying and he was right. Darren likes to put pressure on those guys and, and you know, are you confident or are you second guessing yourself? And, and uh, he stood out in that way, you know, as one example, but I think there's been several examples of a lot of the young players standing out that way. Yeah, just going back to Dax real quick, sorry. Uh, he, uh, he talked about how he, had, he, he he's not used to kind of being a guy that lines guys up, mm -hmm. but he certainly seems to be comfortable with that. I guess it kind of speaks to what you guys saw. 
Yeah, we, we want those guys to be comfortable as quickly as possible. And the good news is when you're trying to get uh, Von Bell and Mike Hilton lined up, it, it doesn't take a lot. You know, those guys generally are probably one step ahead of you. Uh, so he's, you know, at this moment, he's surrounded by some really, really, really good veterans um, who have a high level of football IQ. How much more is the league uh, positionless player driven now than when you first came into the league? I mean, so much position versatility that, you know, in yeah. this era. It, was, it, was it that way when you first came into the league? I, I just think it's probably more 11 personnel versus nickel than um, – there's, I would reckon when I came in in 2012, there was probably a lot more 21 personnel and, and heavier sets, so you're getting more base defenses. Um, those percentages have, have just shifted some. Um, so maybe you see more roles because of three receivers being on the field. You, you have those DBs that do a little bit more. I, I really can't say that because I wasn't in this league for the, the 60 to 80 years before I showed up, so maybe this comes in cycles, but that's just that's what I've seen in the, the – 10 plus years I've been here. What's it After seeing a little bit of competition, specifically with the seven on seven, what has stuck out to you the most so far? Well, uh, they want to be perfect. You know, the, these guys have a very high standard for themselves, and it's upsetting when something doesn't quite go their way, and that's what you want to see as a coach that frustration. Um, and you know the fuel to get it right on the next rep. Um, that's that's where we want to be right now. That's the step we need to be taking. Is uh, strive for perfection on every play, and if it's not that way, then it's below standard, and that's that's where we want to be. How important are these sessions for developing some depth at wide receiver, especially with T working off to the side? It's. It's important that those guys become comfortable with what we're asking them to do so that when they come back in training camp and we're going for real with the pads on and against different competitions, um, that they feel like they can play up to their potential. What I mean by that is there's there's no indecision on where am I supposed to line up when I break the huddle, what what route depth am I supposed to be at. they got to get all that ironed out now so that when they show up and they're really competing for those, those roster spots, um, their full potential can shine through and it's not – you know, the mental side that's slowing them down. And so I think that's the key as we come out of summer, that those guys feel confidence in that area so they can show up and really compete in training camp. Anybody standing out to you? Yeah, I'm hesitant to say that because yeah. I think the second you say it, you'll say the opposite the next day. So uh, they, they've all shown reasons why they should be here. When you have guys with position versatility like you have in the secondary, all three of you guys have played, you know, slot or outside or safety or whatever, uh, in the box, they played multiple places. How do you handle that? Do you, do you teach them one thing first and let them digest it? Do you teach it all at once? How do you how do you break guys into that, that phase of being uh, multiversal? Yeah, you're talking about three rookies. Yeah, draft picks. When they first come in. Yeah, uh, one position to start. You know, and, and let's just get good at, at playing that position. Again, there, there's so much just natural crossover um, that shows up that that they start to understand the concepts. And that, that's what you really want in both phases is people understanding concepts and not memorizing the job that this specific position has. Because you just never know when defensively you get caught off guard by emotion and now all of a sudden you're in a whole different position than we ever coached you to be in. But your training takes over because you've sat in meetings over and over and over and you've heard Mike Hilton coach a certain way and now you're safety in that same position and you got to play that technique to get us out of the play. And so um, I think our defensive staff does a really good job of, of making them understand that so that they can play fast on the field regardless of what position they're on. Yeah. Do you maybe tinker with scheme and stuff, maybe more so now than you do a training camp in terms of maybe stuff you thought about the offseason wrinkles that you want to install, and then you see what it looks like and see if you like it or not. Is this really the time of the year where you just kind of start to experiment? I, I think there's some, uh, there's a little bit of both there. there. There are some things you want to expose them to briefly now. So if you have to pull from that in training camp or in week seven or eight, you know, you can refer back to things that we introduce them to now when there's less stress on the installs and the timing and things like that. And so um, there, there's plenty of things, you know, I think Brian today was on uh, install 13, you know, as he got up in front of the skill guys. And so we're pretty far down the road there uh, with some stuff that we don't major in, uh, but will come up over the course of the season. And, and we want those guys exposed to it before they show up for training camp. So uh, once you get to training camp, you do scale it down. Let's let's figure out what we're going to be really good at with this group of people for this 2020 season and try to emphasize that more than anything else. You all been on, excuse me, you all been on the cutting edge with 11. I guess you all, you all have been running 11 more so before the rest of the league has started to do it. What's it been like as you guys have kind of on the forefront of that and trying to make sure that you're kind of staying on top of that? What's that process like in the offseason as you kind of ramp up for OTAs to see what you like and don't like? I think over the last four or five years, you see the defenses are, are um, 
I don't want to say more comfortable, but they're they're trying to get a step ahead on, on 11 personnel and all the motions that have taken place. And you saw, certainly saw that a lot this year, where, where defenses were there, and and they were ready for it. So now it's it's time for the next evolution, you know, on how to manipulate some of that stuff. But um, that that's that's been football since since forever, you know, is is kind of things going in waves like that. We got 13, 13 installs out of how many? <clears throat> Uh, that's you can ask Brian. You know how many he wants to divvy up. Whether uh, it, it can get, you know, um, you know, there might just be one, one or two plays in a certain install. But Do you get them all uh, before camp or, or uh, get them all before. We get for the most part. We get everything in. You know, and, and whether we actually get to rep it on the field or not. Again, you just want the guys exposed to it, um, particularly the new players, so they've heard it. And and as they're reviewing their notes over June and July, um, they're not showing up in in, in August and hearing it for the first time, they, they get a chance to, to learn it. So when it does come up, that one or two reps during the season, they've, they've already studied that at some point. Is Tyler Shelvin is Tyler Shelvin dealing with a, a forearm issue? Wrist, yeah. Wrist, yep. Yeah. Get hurt here? Or? Uh, it's been bothering him. So they, they just had a slight procedure. Might keep him out the next two weeks, but um, nothing major. Expect, was that a wrap or a cast? Expect him for camp. Yeah. Is that a wrap or a cast that he's got? Um, he had it wrapped up today, yeah. What's impressed you most about LC and just kind of a two part question here? He just got finished talking to me about Frank Pollock's impact on him, and he said yeah. that in Dallas he had four offensive line coaches, and that kind of played an impact on how his career went at the end of Dallas. How have you seen Frank and LC interact, and why do you think Frank is able to bring out so much good out of his players? Well, Frank, Frank is uh, very demanding. Um, the expectations are very clear. I think offensive linemen appreciate that. Um, on the same time, he's when you do it right, man, there's no one more excited than, than Frank. And so I think the players just appreciate that. Um, you know, he's he's won a lot of championships as a player as well, been in a lot of stuff like that. So there's respect there as well that he's been through what he's asking them to go through. He's done it at a high level himself. Um, coached a lot of great players, been a part of a lot of great teams. Um, and he knows his stuff. And, and players know when their coaches know their stuff. And Frank's, Frank's certainly fit to that mold. So they just got a lot of respect for those guys. They, they love playing for him. Um, LC obviously liked playing for him in Dallas. And that was probably a big part of why he's here. You know, not, not so much. Uh, much of, but but he's got a lot of respect for Frank and, and wanted to keep playing for Frank and that's that's awesome. Uh, we'll use whatever tool we got at our disposal to bring in great players. And he has been a pro every second he's been here. You know, he's one of the first guys in that, that room, in the weight room, and um, him and those other guys, you know, Alex and Ted have, have really been good up there. Um, you know, just, just watching what we ask our guys to do in these walkthroughs and how detailed we be, it, it can be, to some, can be boring and monotonous if they don't understand how to utilize that stuff um, to their advantage. And LC is a guy that we really highlighted today as a great example of just working technique in a walkthrough and trying to get better, trying to make Sam better. Um, so it's it's been really great to have him in the building and we're excited he's here. First time we've seen, I think, the field goal unit. Um, curious, Zach, what you look for when you're evaluating at OTA point, not training camp, but OTAs from Cal and Drew as opposed yeah. to Mark and Kevin? Well, it's all, you're evaluating the same thing, the snap and the hold and, and uh, making sure the kicker's comfortable as well with that combination. And, and then you got a bunch of guys up front too that are doing those techniques for the first time with Darren, you know, whether it's offensive linemen, tight ends, D linemen, um, everyone that's in the mix there, uh, Dander does a good job holding them to a very high standard. So it's good to get them in the mix, get them live action. He's installed the stuff. We've done it in meetings, but now we get a chance to do it full speed. So um, that, that part's been good. We got rained out yesterday to do it. So this was our first day we actually got to do it. It's clear, uh, you know, Carmen's getting a lot of opportunity on the field. What do you like, what you've seen from him that's led to him getting now this opportunity in these He's had really good urgency. I think he's um, doing a good job taking it in from some of the vets around him, you know, with Jonah and Ted. <clears throat> so, uh, again, it, it's it's a little bit hard to evaluate the lineman right now when there's no contact or anything like that. But uh, I think on air, they've done a really good job taking the drill work and the meeting work to the field and, and executing as best they can. And Jackson's one of the guys that's that's done a nice job of that. Yeah. Coach, what have you seen from Ted as far as uh... – you know, being a leader, kind of the you know, kind of how you talk about LC. What's mm -hmm. the brought to the um, Ted's going to be a coach someday. <laughs> That's what I see from him. You know, he's he's not only um, a really good football player who's won a lot of championships and knows what it takes, um, but he he maintains a very high standard for himself and for others, and um, that's that's really exciting. See, I mean, it seems like those guys have transformed the culture of that room. One. 
One fell swoop, you change the culture, you, you have to believe it. Never. I, I think there's been guys that have come and gone that have attributed that, you know, also. I think Riley was awesome with that last year. Um, we had a lot of young players. You know, Xavier and Q were, were really good there, Trey. So so there's been guys that did it, but you got a new group of guys now that are coming from somewhere else, and um, they've really hit the ground running that way of doing it how Frank wants it done and bringing those young guys along as well, you know, and, and helping Jonah too. You know, Jonah going into his fourth year now. and. So that's it's been a really fun group to, to watch. What have you thought of Hayden Hurst so far? What do you see kind of bringing to the tight end group? As expected, you know he's um, tuned in, and and he and James are joined at the hip there, and Drew, and um, so it's been fun to watch them operate, and communicate, and him to learn our system. Um, you know he's done a good job executing it, and you know he had a really really great route today where he broke leverage and made a nice catch, and Joe was there on time to throw. So we're we're really excited about his potential with us. What, what's the challenge? Is there maybe a different challenge now when you have a team coming off the Super Bowl? They know they can be good. You're trying to maintain that level, start to build that level as a coach. What's that challenge like in the off season, and how do you go about that? Well. Um, to not just to not take things for granted just because we had a successful 2021 that everything is going to carry over and so you don't have to spend time talking on things that you spent time talking the last three years you know and last year specifically so I think from a coaching side that's that's starting over and making sure we're reteaching everything um, there might be a term that that we used over and over with with Jamar or another young player that we take for granted that they knew, and maybe it was we never properly explained it. Now they get to hear it day one, taught again, like, oh, that's what that I heard that a thousand times last year. Now that's why we use that code word, you know. And so there, there's a lot of things I think with young players that um, that pops up, and even the veterans, you know. That's man, I, I didn't realize we've we've used that word over and over, and this is going to help me understand it better next time because now I understand the the genesis of where it comes from. So um, those are the types of things that we really focus on now in the spring. Joe Burrow has told us um, that getting off to a fast start is one of his big priorities for this year, that the offense wasn't where it needed to be in, let's say, the first quarter of the season. Would you say overall as a team, that's kind of your message, I've heard the word you use, urgency, quite a bit. Would you say maybe that's the difference between last year at this point and now? Um, hard for me to say. Last offseason was so different. You know, because we, we really didn't get the full deal that we're getting more, even more so this year. So we've had more meeting time before we hit the field. Um, so it's a little it's a little hard to compare. You do feel a team that's very confident in what we're asking them to do, and that's key. Also, trying to keep it fresh with them to where they're learning new stuff and challenging. Uh, but uh, you know, it, it, I'm not there yet with focusing on how we're going to start the season. Joe obviously has his standards that he wants to follow. I do think in general, starting the season fast, starting games fast is, is critical for us. Um, and it will be a big part of, of how we communicate going forward. Zach, when you Just guys not having a mandatory mini camp, this is typically the time where players that are going through contract negotiations, you get a sense of what's going on, if they show up or not. Uh, with Jesse, how have the conversations been like if you've been having those with him? And are you optimistic that by July 15th, you guys will hopefully have an extension? I'm not going to make any predictions on those guys. You know, it's all strictly voluntary right now. We laid out the offseason how we thought was best for this year, and so we're not having any mandatory minicamp. I think we're getting great work, and we've had tremendous participation from our guys. And so um, we'll just keep getting that work, and when the other guys join us, they join us, and, and we'll hit the ground running. You mentioned that uh, this this year, the offseason, the OTAs, you get more meeting time, much more work. Your year two players, the advancement of the year two mm -hmm. guys from year one, um, it's been varying successes. Obviously, Jamar can't do much better than he did. But have you seen advancement in the second year from from uh, the first year for a lot of those guys? I think it's slowed down for them. You know, they're probably the biggest group I talk about when hearing a term again for the second year. Uh, they have a, a chance to really digest it now because they've been through a full year of doing it. Now this is a slower time of year where we're not having to play a game, get ready for a game. Um, so I, I feel like those are the guys that probably uh, benefit the most from this second spring where things have slowed down. And again, their potential now gets to show through a little bit more because they're playing faster and with more confidence. Given what Jesse means to this team, captain leadership, how do you not allow it to be a distraction that he isn't here? Even though I know it is voluntary, mm -hmm. how do you not let that happen? Or how does the team not let that become a distraction? We, we love Jesse, and, and the business part is the business part, you know, but we have to continue to move forward and get our work done, and, and I think the guys have handled that really well. Great. Nice